The 13-1 Brenham Cubs battled the Port Lavaca Calhoun Sand Crabs, another 13-1 squad. Both teams playing here at Reliant Stadium with a chance to punch their ticket to Jerry World at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Here are the highlights. It was cold and windy in Houston on the outside of Reliant Stadium, but indoors, the retractable roof was closed and it was 72 degrees with only a draft to deal with. The Sand Crabs went three and out on their first drive against a rejuvenated Cup defense that allowed only six points in the quarterfinals after allowing at least 30 in each of the previous three playoff rounds. On the first Brenham offensive play of the game, running back Ernest Patterson broke two tackles on this long run into Calhoun territory. Quarterback Caleb Hill got off to a slow start as he overthrew receivers in the early going. The Cub drive stalled and kicker Tim Pham lined up to attempt a 33-yard field goal with only two made three-point kicks on the season. Brett Dolan with the call. We'll try this one from 33 to start the scoring. Quick snap and a fake. Wide open is Holman. Where did he come from? He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Brenham. James Holman was wide open. Nobody picked him up. I almost think they ran 10 players out of the field and then let Holman kind of step in unannounced. Check out the replay and look towards the bottom of the screen. You can only see a white helmet come on the field late, which was Holman. By the time anyone from Calhoun noticed him, he was already halfway to the end zone, perhaps checking out the replay you just saw. And just like that, it's 7-0 Brenham. We were looking for a good fake, and we saw it on YouTube with Georgia Tech. A good buddy of mine, uh, ta uh, Sean Bell at Magnolia West, uh, we'd seen him do it, and, uh, and, and so he helped us with it. And so, I mean, we, everything we've gotten, we get from somebody else. Calhoun's next possession was a disaster. Quarterback Hunter Borum was sacked by Anthony Raxton on first down. Then on third down, a bad snap from center as Borum is just forced to eat it as Travis Hudson brought the QB down. The defense would come up even bigger later in the game. Next Brennan possession, the Cubs faced a fourth and one, and invoking the rule of the wild Cub, Backup QB Walter Thomas comes in and gets the first down with the more traditional QB sneak. That was a missed chance for Calhoun to get off the field, a chance that would benefit the Cubs and Hill, who needed a little redemption for his overthrows. I think I need to put more air on it. I was a little and thrown into the wind, playing in a dome, there's no wind. But, you know, I overshot him. My team did a great job of after overthrowing him, coming right back to me, hey, you're going to get it. We know you are. He's just a little nervous early, but uh, golly, big ball game, big stage, junior in high school, but he did a great job, and we wouldn't have it any other way. And it didn't take long for Hill to get it. First on a third and five at the Calhoun 35, he hits Holman for a 30-yard gain down to the five-yard line. Great footwork. Then after a five-yard penalty, finds Travante Johnson on a fade for the touchdown. Johnson with the catch and a 14-0 Brenham lead. Calhoun scored to make it 14-7 after one as Corey Williams slipped in from a yard out. Hill settled down after those early overthrows and here he hits Holman on the sideline. Did he get his feet in? It was Excuse awfully close. Left and right, both in right there. That's, That's a good. two foot catch. Yeah. What a play. Better believe it. Replay from up high shows that he indeed got his feet down for a nice catch and sets up the Cubs on the doorstep of the goal line once again. So, which Cub would ring the doorbell this time? That would be Ernest Patterson from two yards out to make it 21 to 7. Calhoun scored again to get back within a touchdown as Bourne faked the handoff and cut the lead to 21 14. Then the illness known as Fumbleitis struck. Each team fumbled in Calhoun territory, but then it hit Calhoun again. This time, it proved costly. The football's loose again, and this time it's still loose. A scoop and a score, Brandon Baird. Eric Yeager with his second sack of the half forces the Hunter Borm fumble. Brandon Beard scores from 11 yards out. If that fumble wasn't the fatal blow to the Sand Crabs title chances, the very next Calhoun play from scrimmage ended their opportunity at winning the Golden Trapezoid. Football's loose again! Picked up and scored for a touchdown. Bourne pitches the ball to Brandon Smithwick, who just simply drops the ball. Desmond Lockett picks up the early Christmas present and runs it in for another 11-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. Two defensive TDs in 14 seconds puts Brenham up 35-14 at halftime and left both teams stunned trying to figure out what just happened. That was a turn in the game. Yeah, I'm very, very fortunate that happened. Our kids kept playing hard and had some breaks. For a defense to put points on the board for us, takes a lot of pressure off us. 
and kind of like lifts the world off our shoulders so we can just go play. I'm just disappointed that we didn't handle the second quarter very well. Giving them those two touchdowns there, that was just something uncharacteristic of us. I was very nervous at halftime because I just thought, well, if we blow this, they're going to fire me. Don't worry, Glenn, your job is safe. Third quarter and the fifth sand crab fumble of the game leads to more Brenham scoring. Caleb Hill didn't overthrow anyone in the second half. Hill threw two more TD passes, including this 61-yard strike to Travante Johnson and 35 yards to Cortland Sutton off the play-action fake to complete the scoring. Caleb Hill overcame his struggles to finish 12 of 18 for 253 yards and four touchdown passes. Brenham back in the state title game after their 56-21 victory. So did Hill think the Cubs played a complete game? Yeah, I, honestly, now that you said that, I, I really do think that everything was kind of here tonight. We, I think we had our minds right. The greatest thing that happened today was we played as a team, we played as a family, and, and that's really, I, I couldn't tell you what all happened other than that. We just played hard, very proud of them. Kenneth, this kind of reminds me of Brownwood. Uh, not only the fact that you were an assistant coach there, but your son got to get his feet wet there in coaching. He played for a state championship there in uh, 78, and now it's kind of come full circle. He is now playing for a state championship game, and you're kind of watching it here as it unfolds. Tell me about maybe the tie-in for Brenham and Brownwood and the traditions, and how proud you are of your son. Well, first thing, I, I'm so proud of my son and all his coaching staff. He has two coaches with him that played with him in 1978. And one has been with him 23 years. That's Tim Erline, his offensive coordinator, and his defensive coordinator has been with him 13 years here at Brenham. And they have taken the basics of what Coach Wood taught me back in 1951, and they're still doing it. They're green. Blazers and ties, coaches wearing ties on the sideline is something that we did. And uh, we were different at the time. Well, right now, they're different. But not many people do that. It just fills my heart. Uh, an old coach, the only thing he really has is when people that played for you 55, 60 years ago come back and tell you they just thank you for what you did for them. And you don't know what you did. You just did your job and I think that's Glenn right here. Once again, your final score, 56 to 21. The Brenham Cubs advanced to the state championship game. It's the second time since 2009. That year, they lost to Alito, and they're gonna play him again for the state championship of Class 4A Division II. Here at Reliant Stadium, I'm Jeff Power for Max Prep Sports, your leader in online high school sports content.